In this episode, I'm going to cover creating a GXT project. I'll start by creating a GWT project, then I'll add a GXT to that project, and then I'm going to show how to debug it to start with. So to get started, I'm going to go to the GXT guide getting started with GXT4.0.x. And what I'll do is show how to start with 402. So to get started, I'm going to scroll down here and I need to download the SDK. I could click, I'm going to command click on this to open up a new tab. And I could start with the 30 day trial SDK. I'm going to go back and since I have a support subscription already set up with GXT, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go to the support portal. I'm going to go to the download section. Once I've got to the download section, which I've already set up in this tutorial, I'm going to scroll down to GXT and click on download. It starts to download the 402 SDK. It'll take a few moments. Once that's downloaded, I'm going to go show in finder since I'm on the Mac in the file manager. And if you're on windows, you need to go to the folder manager. Now that it's downloaded on the Mac, I use a double click to extract. On Windows, it'll be a different routine. So I'm gonna double click. So now that I've got it extracted, I'm gonna move it to my favorite SDK folder. And I'm gonna open up another folder manager. And I have training, Sencha, SDKs, and I'm gonna move it right into there. So this is my favorite spot to show how I'm gonna store the SDK. So now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna close the first window and I'm ready for the next step. So what is that? So I'm going to go back to the getting started guide and scroll down to the next section. I have a few tidbits in here about how to set up the Maven configuration for downloading the SDK, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. So the next steps cover adding the GXT module to my GWT application. What does that mean? I'm going to go to Eclipse and start by creating an application a GWT application, and then I'll add GXT to it. And I'll come back to this and show how that's done. I'm gonna go to my Eclipse. I've already showed how to set up the GWT Eclipse plugin in the previous episodes. And now I'm ready to create my first GWT application. And now I'm going to go to the GWT Eclipse plugin dropdown, and I'm going to select New GWT Application Project. Once I do that, it's got a couple parameters it needs to start. I'm going to select my first project name. This will be my project sandbox. And let's put GXT in there. The next is my com.gawcat.sandbox. It's just one of my domain names I use for my sandbox. And I'm going to select create and new. And I'm going to select my git directory, which I'll publish this project once I'm done creating it. And I'll put that at the bottom of the description of this video. And once I've done that, I'm going to select finish. So the project has generated. It's on the left in the package explorer. And this package presentation is in hierarchy format. And I changed it earlier in a, another episode. And to do that, you can go up here to the menu and select Package Presentation Hierarchical. Okay, so now that I have the GWT project generated, I'm going to go to the GWT module that was created. So in this case, my GXT project sandbox, I used spaces which were converted to underscores. I'm going to open up the GWT module descriptor by selecting on it, double clicking. And once the module descriptor is loaded up, I'm going to scroll down to where it says clean or inherits the clean module. And I'm going to comment that out by clicking on command question. Our GXT project doesn't support clean, but does support standard. So if you use the GWT widgets, you can use the other themes and you can uncomment those if you use those. So I'm going to go down to where it says other module inherits and I'm going to import the GXT project and put it here. So I'm going to go back to the GXT getting started guide. So I'm going to select the inherits for GXT and copy that with command C for copy. I'm going to go back and paste it in. And there's another tidbit I want to copy and that is GXT style sheet. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in my project. This will standardize some of the styling for the project that we use in GXT. So I'm going to go back 
and look at the overall format of my GWT module. The first module that I import is the GXT. I've imported the default style sheet for GXT. And I'll select the Neptune theme and I'll copy that and I'll go back to the module and I'll also paste that in. Once I've pasted that in, I'm going to fix the formatting and then I want to test my project out. So I'm going to right click on the project, go down to debug as, and I'm going to select quit development mode with Jetty. This will start off super dev mode. This error means I didn't import the GXT jar yet. I'm going to go up to the project, right click on it, go down to properties. Once I'm to the properties, I'm going to go to the Java build path menu and select the library section, a tab at the top, and I'm going to add external jars. And what I want to do is add the jars that I just downloaded, which was in training. I put it in my central folder, SDKs, uh, GXT 402, and I'm going to select GXT. Once I've selected GXT, I'm going to select open, OK. And now that the jars on the project, let's just check by going to the reference libraries, and there it is, GXT jar. And now that it's ready, I'm going to go up to the launch, the debug icon, and select my GXT project sandbox again. In this case, I forgot to import the Neptune theme. This is the Neptune theme path. So I'm going to go up to the project, right click on it, go back to properties, add external jars, and I'm going to select the Neptune theme. There's also the Triton. I could attach that at this time, but I won't. I'll cover this in another video. So I'm going to select Neptune, open, OK, and I'll try again. This is great for experiencing how to attach the jars to the project. So now that I've ready to debug again, I'm going to go back up to the debug icon and select my GXD project sandbox. This starts a local web server with super dev mode and pushes the resources into the war directory. If I go over here to the war directory and I right click and refresh it, you'll see the resources from the compiling show up. Once the process is ready to go, it'll give me a link to click on. Well, I could double click on this to open the browser up, but since this is the first time I've launched it, I'm going to select SDBG Chrome JS Debugger. And you can see that the process is launched. Well, it doesn't have the quit theme or any GXT widgets in this project yet, but it's, it's wired up and ready to go. So what I want to do is go back to my Eclipse project, open up the sandbox. I'm going to erase all the sample contents within the body, click Save. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go to my project sandbox, and I'm going to do the same thing with the entry point. This is where everything gets started in the GWT project. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Well, entry point means for GWT that there's a module that gets loaded here and I'm going to go command one for adding unimplemented methods. That's auto assist. And I want to add my first GXT widget here and that will be text button button equals new text text button. And I'll say open. And I'll hover over it and I'll select import the text button. Let's just make sure I'll hit shift command O for auto import cleanup. And I'm going to check that the correct text button was imported. And here we go. I have a GXT button. So I'm going to go root panel .get .add button. Once I've added the button, I'm going to check to see if it gets loaded by saving the file. And I'm going to go back to the browser and reload it. it. This will incremental compile the next time it gets reloaded and it will update the page with the new content. And here I go, I got a GXT button. Okay, so that's pretty exciting. I'm gonna cover in more detail in the future episodes on what you can do with GXT here. Now that I know that the GXT works, I'm gonna go back to the IDE and just review real quickly what I did. I right clicked on the project, went to properties, and then I went to the Java build path libraries and I added two of the jars, 
the first jar was the gxt.jar and the gxt-theme.neptune jar. In another episode, I'll show how the GXT jars get loaded onto the class path with the Maven. I won't cover that in this video, I'll cover that in another episode. After I've attached the jars to the class path, I select OK. And then I went to the GXT project descriptor or GWT module descriptor and I added GXT to it. It takes three parts. And what that means is I added the inherits for the GXT. This tells me where the GXT classes are and imports them into the GWT compile process. Then I added the default styling for our project for CSS. It normalizes the CSS across all the browsers. And that's called reset.css. If you don't add this, you'll get some funky things that go on in your project. Then I added one of our themes that is built already, and that's the Neptune theme. And I'll cover in future episodes how to change the theme to Triton and the classic blue or gray. So that concludes how to get started with GXT in a Java standard format. And thanks for watching today. Follow me for more videos on GXT, and I'll catch you later.